Hey guys, and welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. I thought a little tiny eyeball sticking through the helmet was a good start to the episode. And uh, if you missed the last one, we are in the Darkspawn Tunnels. We are trying to kill some, like, necromancers in Darkspawn from the looks of it. So, let's push forward. And here we are, back outside. So. I know what's coming. This is a nice clear sky. Yeah, we've got more of these awesome little cutscenes. <laughs> that terrified look. Yep. Right. We've got the Risen Ogre. And then we've got this thing. That is the one we're after. The Necromancer. We need to take him out ASAP. Because he will just keep rising the dead. So, let's go. Oh no. Alistair, you're meant to threaten. That's not good. Yep. I'm here. We're going to take the Necromancer off his feet at least. Oh, we're going to heal up my guy. God damn. Yeah. Come on then. Um. Shit. Where's Life Ward? There it is. Quickly. Come on. Come on. That's it. Yeah, you focus on the dog. That's a good plan. I like that plan. Why are we frozen? That's it, come on. Dog is down, but that's fine. Okay. Let's take you out quick. Oh. Ouch. Okay. That's less good. We're about to get murdered. Whoa. That was quick. I didn't realise how quickly it would kill the ogre. Nice. In war, victory. I think that's for killing a certain amount of uh, darkspawn. And we've got Duncan's sword and Duncan's dagger. Make sure there's no more lootables. Doesn't look like it. It looks pretty clear. Right. Let's grab the necromancer. Kaelin's helm. <laughs> And of course, we have run out of space. Um, I know what we can do. Back to Old Faithful. I can go there. How do they look? Pretty cool. We're not going to be using them, though. Um, I want to change character. Thank you. You can have that dagger and that axe for a second, and that will free up some space. There you go, Kaelin's helm. There it is. The last of them. It has been a long day. By the lines around your eyes, I dare say you look as old as I. And if I may say so, milady, you appear to be getting younger by the day. Be careful who you flirt with, young man. <laughs> when you wake up beside me tomorrow morning, I'll be back to reminding you of your grandmother. Beside you? <laughs> you heard what I said. It would not be the first time I woke to a younger man in my bed. Are all women this evil and conniving when they grow old? Just me, my dear. <laughs> Just me. Well, there you go, Alistair. <laughs> um, right, let's go back. Let's go for a little walk. At least I've taken Alistair's helmet off of him. That's nice. Poor little doggo. Alistair, are you all right? Oh, they left him here to rot. We need to do something. Uh, he is of royal blood and deserves a pyre. He was a good man. 
who hoped too much and died too young. He deserves what little honor we can afford to grant him. Oh, good Trojan. There you go. Give him a peaceful send off. And that is the Return to Ostagard DLC all finished. Now how do I get out of here? I go straight the way I'm looking. Okay. Oh, well, that's not the right button. There we go. So yeah, that is the Return to Ostagard DLC. It just mainly to give you some nicer weapons. Also, you know, get some uh, closure with poor old King Kaelin. So we will head back to the party camp. Um, sell some stuff, heal obviously all these injuries, because look at us, and then reassess our next situation. Okay guys, we just came back to the party camp, I just sold a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, we're going to quickly run up to Denerim, and then um, I'm going to drop some stuff off in Soldier's Peak in that little chest around Denerim, I want to see if they've got any, um, obviously the armour from Wade Elves, I want to see if there's any special like belts or anything I can buy, and then we'll probably talk to Shale and end the episode so let's move forward i will pick this up when we get to den room so okay guys so i was just visiting here to put all our stuff in that uh, party chest we now have and i remembered we picked up that piece of ore before we started the dlc warden so we here we go in my travels i found this strange metal in a crater this this is star metal if you give this to me, I will craft for you a thing of legend. Uh, how much will it cost me? Nothing. My family owes you much. A star metal longsword, that sounds perfect. And so it shall be. Look at that thing. It is done. I call this blade Starfang. May it serve you well. I must rest after my exertions. Warden? So yeah, we now have a blade called Starfang. So, let's have a little look at it. Here it is. You obviously have to be really strong to use it, but 3 dexterity, 3 damage, and plus 2 armor penetration. We can put on Alistair, see how it looks. Doesn't it look so cool? But we won't be using it. We'll stick with our Aodith or whatever it is. Right, we're going to put it in party camp and I'll meet you guys Got it. in Denrim. Oh, we have a battle. What is it going to be? It's old Tegrin. This is actually ideal. I want to see if he has anything nice. You have coin, stranger? With Orzammar closed off, old Tegrin can give you a discount. Fine weapon and arms, dwarven made. I have all the coin. When it loads. Right, what does he have? Uh, nothing I want there. Ceremonial armor boots. Mm. Nothing I really want there. Temperament. Nah. Uh, not really. No. I mean, that tomb would be nice. One skill. Okay, we have the coins. Why not? Right, and now let's use it. Uh, where is it? Oh yeah, I bought that for Morrigan, didn't I? Although she has sank. Never mind, that's going to win then. Where's that thing I just bought? Here it is. Use. Educated. Of course we are. Um, and what are we going to put this in? We will put it into Dexterity. No, it won't. Never mind. Oh, it gives us one of these, doesn't it? I remember. Put it into Stealing. Bit of a waste of gold now. Oh, well. It is what it is. Right. Now we'll go to Denrin. 
Right. Let's go and speak to Wade. I also then want to head up to the ones of Thedas. That little store for the mages. See if they've got any nice belts or anything. Or rings. Something that's going to help boost our characters up a bit. Once. It's so laggy. Again. This recording session has been very laggy. Right. Let's get our second piece of armor. We're closed. Oh, it's you. The Drake scale armor is done. And it's, well, decent. Few things I'm rather proud of. And it didn't take as long as I feared. Odd. You'd better be very proud, Wade. We can't afford any more flights of fancy. I feel good, actually. I wouldn't mind working on Lord such and such's armor today. We'll see how long this lasts. Here's your armor. Now please leave. Thanks. Does he have anything for sale? Welcome. Oh, it's you. He hates us. Please leave. And if you have any more scales, you can shove them. Yeah, <sighs> just leave. <laughs> he hates us. But this armor, is it the superior one? If I remember. Yeah. Should we see how it looks quick? It just looks like normal level armor. But it's good. Actually, can I put down Leliana? 20 strength. Plus one dex. Oh, we should put this on the Leliana, you know. Yeah, we will, eventually. Right, let's go to the Wonders of Thedas if I can stop running into barrels. So tell me, was the Tower of Magi everything you thought it would be? Abominations running rampant, Templars ready to slaughter every mage in sight. Yes, it rather met all my expectations. You don't think you might have been better off getting your training there, instead of whatever your mother taught you? You're right. My mother didn't nearly have as many abominations running about. That certainly would have improved my education. Hmm. I'll give you that one. I'm so relieved. <laughs> I love the dynamic between those two. It's so good. Right, let's move to the Wonders of Thedas. Keep running, my dude. Okay, nearly there. How close is everyone to leveling up, actually? That is a good question. Okay. About halfway at best. That's fine. Right. Tranquil Proprietor. Welcome to the Wonders of Thedas. We carry items crafted by the Circle, as well as a variety of antiquities. Is there anything you would like to see? Uh, browse his wares. Right, I wouldn't mind getting new staff for... Wind, to be honest. Yeah, we'll take that, it's only seven. Oathkeeper. I sold that to him, didn't I? I don't know. Um, does he have anything nice? Oh, that would be nice. We'll put them on win as well. Right. Silverite boots. Oh my god, he does. He has some nice stuff. This is the one we to be searching for, though. This is it. Hmm. Damn. Twitch. We'll take Twitch. Why not? Right, we're gonna head back to the party camp very quickly, so I will see you guys there. Okay, so we came out to camp. I put some runes on some items, uh, sold some stuff. We're going to finish the episode up by just talking to Shell for a bit. So, I've watched a lot of humans in my time. It should be aware that I've decided that it is not much like any of them. <laughs> uh, great. That's super. Thanks, Shell. Surely it must come from some superior lineage, yes? Some breed of flesh creature that has decided to elevate its genetic stock above its natural shortcomings. I love how much Shale hates just the humans. Uh, my father was Tien of Hyever. Oh, then that must be it. I knew there had to be some reason, it being a human and all. See? I would appreciate if it didn't spread around that I said anything. Humans might start to get the wrong idea. They might start thinking their race is not completely hopeless. I love... yeah, I just love Shell. What a character. Uh, yeah, I'll keep it to myself. Now, let us crush something into a fine paste before it starts to think I've gone all soft. 
perish the thought. Anything for you? It speaks. Uh, you're still with me, I see. Yes, its adventures are interesting, even if the chances for success are remarkably slim. It would be better to throw oneself off a cliff, I suspect. Does it wish me to leave? I can, though I see no reason to go. No, you're definitely staying. Um, no stay, you're quite helpful. No doubt. Without me, it would have to carry its inventory on its own. Perhaps we should continue. Its chances of success are small enough without further dawdling. <laughs> Absolutely. It speaks. Um, I would have expected Golems to be different. Different? Different than what? Different than a statue? Different than a log? Should I talk in a monotone? Yes, Master, I exist to serve the Master. I shall kill for the Master and only for the Master. Perhaps it expected me to have a booming voice. Recite limericks. <laughs> I can recite limericks if it likes. <laughs> Should we get this thing to sing to us? Uh, are they dirty limericks? Mostly they involve slaughtering pigeons in creative and invasive manners. I have never met another golem. I have no idea what one might be like, or why I wouldn't be like them. Why? Has it met other golems? Did they not sound as I do? Uh, I have no idea what... Go no, you just seem very animated. I don't know what other golems might be like, but I am already superior by virtue of my free will. This is a good thing. No, I agree. Um, I agree, being a golem would be handy. Imagine the benefits. No need to eat or sleep or perform other functions. Walk underwater, crush the heads of every opponent. The possibilities are limitless. Barring the occasional 30 years or so of paralysis, there's little to compare. Now stop talking so much. The wagging of its moist little tongue is distracting. <laughs> what a weird sentence. It speaks. I have some questions. It doesn't have better things to do. Not really, no. Are those crystals in your skin? I like to think of them as accessories. Do all golems have them? I suspect that it is an art that was practiced when golems were more, um, commonplace. My former master collected whatever lore he could find on the subject. He searched far and wide to collect what crystals he could and then added them. It is not an unpleasant sensation. So they're... no, it's a dwarven thing then. So I would assume. My former master enjoyed poking around the ruins in the deep roads after all, and bartering with others who did. As I understand it, the crystals allow me to alter the flow of magic around me. Wilhelm had hoped to turn me into a battery of mana, something he could tap at will. That is a very interesting thing. Uh, did they succeed? Did he succeed? Not really. Although now that I think of it, these attempts may be what caused my disruption. Some of the crystals increase the presence of mana, some absorb or reflect spells. There are various kinds. All I can promise is that should it ever find one of these crystals, I can likely tell it the function and what it would do if added to me. Would you be willing to have more added? Why not? I don't get to wear clothing and other adornments like the rest of you creatures after all. That answers its question, I assume? Unless it has more. Uh, I'm told you killed your former master. Did I not already tell it that I do not remember doing such? I remember having a master. My memories of what happened to him are vague. Vague, but not non-existent? Clever and true. Oh, very well. Let me see what I can recall. My former master enjoyed experimenting upon me. I remember that much. There was tinkering with spells and then the crystals. He was very eager to alter my function, I think. What sort of experiments? Bah! I am no mage, and he did not explain himself to me any more than it would explain itself to a sword. He possessed my control rod, 
and back then, it would have prevented me from doing anything he did not command me to, no matter how I might have wished to. So what happened? I am unsure. He was experimenting, and then... nothing. So he hit the kill me button by accident. Oh, ho, ho. It does like to laugh, does it? But who knows, I may have such a thing. And then he was gone. I was standing where I was, in the village, and I could no longer move. The villagers came, poked and prodded me in fear, and then realized they could neither move me nor destroy me. So they simply left me. And in time, I forgot I hadn't stood there all along. That must have been terrible. I'm sorry. <sighs> in fact, at first, I found it more of a relief. For so many years, I'd had to leap to that little toadstool's every command. Get this, pick up that, put it down, pick it up again. The gall! At first, I'd hoped he'd simply decided to leave me there paralyzed. An acceptable trade-off. After years passed, I simply stopped caring. Maybe it has something to do with your crystals. Hmm, possibly. Except that he was not experimenting with the crystals at the time, I think. But my memory is not good. It may be correct. Whatever the mage did seemed to render the control rod useless. For which I should be thankful, yes? And provided it doesn't decide to copy his experiments, not that I would allow it, it is nothing to fear from me. Much. Sounds good to me. The things that it fights, and it fights things often, that is a different story. Let us get back to the walking and the fighting. My stone is beginning to itch again. The walking and the fighting. It speaks. I have some questions. It doesn't have better things to do. How did you end up in Honlith? Do you remember? Oh yes, that I remember quite well. My former master, the mage Wilhelm, he brought me. As I recall, he had acquired some position with whatever lord ruled the land. I, being little more than a glorified possession at the time, was brought along. Oh, how he enjoyed impressing the villagers with me. Gollum, snarl at that villager there. Be fearsome. And of course, I would have to do it. <sighs> of course. Um, but why... no. I would have thought you'd have enjoyed scaring humans. I'd have happily stomped them all into paste, and then ripped down their little houses and stomped on them, too. In fact, after 30 years of watching them, I'd do it twice. What I didn't like was being ordered to do it. Dangled in front of those frightened morons like some scary thing. Once I was a statue, it took those villagers years before they'd even approach me. The first one to actually work up the nerve to touch me urinated himself. <laughs> uh, but why are you out front of the tower? That is where Wilhelm kept me. He wanted me out in the open where I could be frightening like a scarecrow. I was supposed to watch for thieves. Pah. Plus, his wife didn't want me indoors. She said there wasn't room for me. Hag. His wife? Hmph. I was once larger, ten feet tall. Then the loathsome hag complained that I couldn't fit through the doors. So the mage had me shrunk down, shrunk down. Can it believe it? And she still wanted me out. How does, uh, yeah, how does someone shrink a golem? With a chisel. And a lot of nerve. Uh, you didn't like this Wilhelm, I take it. He did love using that control rod. Fondled it so much, his wife actually threatened to throw it in the lane. Ha! <laughs> I would have liked to have seen that. Which reminds me, where did it find the rod? Did it pay a great deal for it? Oh yes, a fortune, in fact. Good. Clearly, I am worth it. We won't tell Shell that. We got it for free. Uh, do you remember anything before Huntleth? I travelled with the mage. He did a lot of travelling, I remember that. But where we went? It is rather fuzzy. I remember great battles, fighting many humans long ago. They were all very soft and squishy. And before that, I... No, there are only images. I was somewhere dark. Just how old are you, exactly? I have no idea. Wilhelm used to brag that the dwarves stopped making golems centuries ago. I do not age as you soft creatures do. Sadly, my memory is no better. 
Plus, I get bored and stop paying attention. Uh, interesting. I'm done asking about that. Good. I was just about done talking about it. It does like to have a good chat now and again, doesn't it? Of course. Moderate strength, plus six. So Shale is very quickly beginning to like us. See? We're getting there with Shale. It speaks. We do. It doesn't have better things to do. Um, how did Wilhelm come to acquire you? That part I know, as Wilhelm often bragged about it to whomever was willing to listen to him. He claimed to have found me in the deep roads. I was in the ruins of a taig, he said, deactivated, with my control rod not far away. You don't know why you were there? I think I remember a battle. It was long before, and then there was darkness. Ah, in short, no, I do not remember why I was there. It makes no difference. Uh, what was Wilhelm doing in the deep roads? It was a hobby of his, scavenging. One of the reasons he travelled so much is that he was looking for entrances into the deep roads, old places the dwarves had long forgotten. And then he would sneak down and search for magical treasure, before anyone was the wiser. I mean, to be fair, the deep roads are awesome. We're going to be going there in the game. Uh, it's probably the next mission we're going to do, but you'll see how good it is. Uh, wouldn't that have been dangerous? Indeed. He had spells that allowed him to remain hidden and move quickly, but he had no defense against the blight and worried constantly that he would get sick. If any darkspawn showed themselves, he fled. More often, he would have to fight other scavengers, dwarfs who had become tainted. In the end, it killed him. I mean, he found me there, right? <laughs> right. Uh, so if he hadn't found you... I wouldn't have had to put up with the twit. And I would be none the wiser. I don't think I was aware while I was there. Not like in the village. Or perhaps I was. Perhaps that was the dark place. And I simply couldn't see anything. How long could even I sit in the darkness and stare out at nothing? Never sleeping? <gasps> oh, I do not wish to think of that. Uh, do you know where in the deep rose this was? No. That secretive bastard refused to tell me. I would ask and ask, but no. He used to say that one day, if I were compliant and didn't talk back at his wife, he would take me there and I could look around myself. Rotten, lying bastard. If I had his head in my hands now, I would squeeze it like a giant lemon. <laughs> Squish. Let's move on. On, then. Plus seven this time. It speaks. Uh, I have some questions. It doesn't have better things to do. No. Nope. Uh, you watched this village day and night for years? I do not sleep, so yes. And I thank it for reminding me. Try to imagine, if it will, what it would be like to be surrounded by nothing but boring peasants, all oblivious to it. Sounds like you're a bit of a voyeur. Oh. <laughs> do we want to say that? Yes, that would be rather horrid. And then there were the birds. A whole village full of pigeons and ravens and sparrows all perching on me day in and day out. Sounds a little messy. Those foolish villagers would spread bird seed near me, drawing the birds because they thought having birds perch on me was quaint. Quaint! If there hadn't been the occasional kind soul to scour me clean, I would... I would... I don't care to discuss this anymore. And that is where the hatred of birds come from. It speaks. Is that everything? It doesn't have better things to do. No. You don't seem to like humans much. That is true. I do not. I'm not interested in getting into a discussion on the subject, however. Ask another time. If it is done asking overly obvious questions... Let us find some humans to throw off a cliff, or something. And there we go, so yeah. Spoken to Shell, we now know a little bit about her. Uh, see? Becoming very friendly with us. Um, but for now, that is going to be the end of this episode. So if you have enjoyed it, please drop the video a like, guys. It helps tremendously. If you're new and you do enjoy it, and you haven't subscribed, if you could hit that subscribe button, that would be even better. And hopefully I will catch all of you in the next one. Bye, guys.